Puzzle's the great equalizer. Then why don't you have any? I love Australian Survivor. The 47 day seasons, three 90 minute episodes per week, and the absolutely insane challenges. I mean, look at this. This is not a Survivor challenge. This is a death trap. One thing Australian Survivor catches a lot of flack for is just how physical these challenges are. I mean, look at this matchup. This is not a fair challenge. But to be fair, neither is this. This got me thinking, are the challenges in Australian Survivor unfair? This question is a bit too broad. We gotta get specific. The puzzle is the great equalizer. How many times have we seen a tribe with a commanding lead only for them to completely flub it at the end because they can't do a slide puzzle? The puzzle isn't the only equalizer. We've seen just as many people fail a ring toss, rolling a ball up a slope into a hole, throwing sandbags. You'll get it soon, War Dog. Keep it up, mate. So I propose this question. How many Australian Survivor Challenges feature some kind of equalizer to prevent blowouts? Are these equalizers more frequent pre- or post modes? And are these numbers bigger or smaller than US Survivor? Hopefully, this will shed some light on whether or not Australian Survivor has unfair challenges. To make the comparison fair, I'll only compare Australian Survivor to seasons of US Survivor from 2016 onwards. So that's Survivor Co Rong to Survivor 45. 8 seasons of Australian Survivor versus 13 seasons of US Survivor. Let's see what they put their contestants through. Now I could do this manually. There are only... Holy shit, there are 306 Australian Survivor Challenges. And 309 US Survivor Challenges in the time frame that I chose. Shit. But just when I thought all hope was lost. What's that I hear? It's the sound of data science nerds. My people, what have they got for me? It's Survivor R, a collection of data sets detailing events across 67 seasons of Survivor. They've got US, Australian, New Zealand, South Africa, even UK, including challenge data. This data set is the Survivor Nerd's dream. Gotta use my computer science degree for something, right? I plan on using this data set for a lot more future videos. If you like niche over analyzing, it's just got a lot more intense. Let's get into it. This data set classifies challenges based on whether or not they feature certain attributes. We're interested in equalizers, so let's start with puzzles. These flags are puzzle, puzzle slide, and puzzle word. We'll collect all challenges that feature at least one puzzle in them. I'm going to exclude challenges where puzzles are the only element. That's not an equalizer at that point. That's just a puzzle. This would exclude the Pearl Islands crossword challenge if it were eligible. I can't actually think of any recent challenges that are just a puzzle. The closest I can think of is the Millennials vs Gen X door maze followed by slide puzzle. But it's worth throwing in the check anyway just for integrity's sake. Okay, let's run the numbers and... This is not looking good. Out of US Survivor's 309 challenges, 106 of them have some kind of puzzle. That's about a third of the challenges that we can already say have some kind of great equalizer in them. Australian Survivor's 306 challenges? 57 puzzles. That's almost half. But all hope is not lost for Australian Survivor. The puzzle may be... The Equalizer! Thank you, Jeff. But I reject the notion that it is the only equalizer. Let's add precision-based challenges to the mix. These include catching, rolling balls, slingshots, throwing balls, throwing coconuts, throwing rings, and throwing sandbags. Just because Wardog really proved how it can be a great equalizer. Some of these equalizers may be a bit more contentious than the puzzles, so I'll be doing sets for the puzzles, the precision, and the cumulative. Of the US Survivor challenges that do not feature a puzzle, 70% have some sort of precision element to them. That's 20.7% of challenges, bringing our total equalized challenges to 57% on US Survivor. Australian Survivor does better than the puzzles, at least. Of the challenges without a puzzle, 64 of them had a precision element to them. That's 20.7%, meaning our total percentage of equalized challenges for Australian Survivor is 39.3%.
Now there are some other categories I considered throwing under the equalizer keys, such as fire, knowledge, memory, mud, obstacle combination lock, obstacle knots, and food. But those all tended to be either the entire point of the challenge, or such a small portion that they weren't really equalizers. So it appears that Australian Survivor has challenges that are inherently less fear than US Survivor. Only slightly, but it is still there. We're not done yet though. I've seen some arguments that this is only really a problem in the pre-merge portion of the game. Because these challenges are unbalanced, it leads to a keep the tribe strong mentality that eliminates certain archetypes earlier than others. So let's see how the stats are, pre-merge and post-merge. Of the 309 US Survivor challenges from Korong to 45, 127 of them were pre-merds. 97 of those had some form of equalizer in them, with 56 of them being puzzles and the remaining 41 being some kind of precision. That 76.3% of challenges pre-merds featuring any form of equalizer, and 44% of them featuring the Great Equalizer. Let's look at Australian Survivor. 182 pre-merge challenges. Considering they start with 24 contestants and don't merge until around the final 13, that makes sense. How many have an equalizer? 86? That's... That's not many. How many of them are the great equalizer? 39? 39 puzzles across 8 seasons of Survivor. That's an average of fewer than 5 puzzles per season. And 47 precision challenges. That's more than puzzles in the pre-merge. Australian Survivor. What the fuck? That's 47.2% of pre-merge challenges featuring an equalizer in them. Compared to 76.3% on US Survivor. And only 21.4 feature the great equalizer. That's insane. We've now put into numbers that pre-merge? Australian Survivor's challenges might be less balanced than US Survivor. Shall we take a look at post modes now? US Survivor features 182 post modes challenges. Huh. That's the same as the number of pre merge Australian Survivor challenges. I don't really have anything to add to that, but if you're not here for overanalyzing Survivor content, I don't know what you're here for. Of those 182 challenges, only 80 of them feature an equalizer in them which is 43.8%. From those equalizers, 50 puzzles, and 30 precision-based equalizers. So 27.4% and 16.5% respectively. This looks much more in the range of Australian Survivor numbers. Alright Australian Survivor, we're going to look at your post merge challenges now. Don't let me down. You've got 124 post merge challenges. Alright, let's go. You've got 34... Equalizers, or 27.4%? Oh no, Australian Survivor, no, don't do this to me. You've got 18 puzzles, or 14.5%? Cool. And 16 precision equalizers, or 12.9%? Awesome. Now you may be thinking, Henry, lots of postmost challenges don't even need an equalizer. Which I agree with. Imagine doing Get a Grip, but then Jeff also said you had to solve a Rubik's Cube while you do it. And Australian Survivor is pretty keen on pre-merge endurance challenges. These also don't need a puzzle. So I did the check again, this time only counting challenges that were multi-part. Let's take a look at post-merge first. Of the 182 post-merge challenges, 153 of them were multi-part in US Survivor. Interestingly, all the puzzle and precision challenges talked about earlier were part of multi-part challenges. That means we can update our numbers slightly. Now we have 80 out of 153, or 52.3% of post-merge challenges having equalizers, with 32.7% of those being puzzles, and 19.6% of them being precision. Of Australian Survivor's 124 post-merge challenges, only 84 of them featured multiple parts and may have needed an equalizer. This is because while US Survivor seems to enjoy a race to collect puzzle pieces and then solve a puzzle, Australian Survivor enjoys fucking torturing people. The penchant for medieval torture devices doesn't prove the post statistics quite significantly. 
It's still not better than US Survivor, but 34 out of 84 is 40.5 percent, which is a big improvement on 27.4 percent. The puzzles improve from 14.9 percent to 21.4 percent, and the precision goes from 12.9 percent to 19 percent. These numbers make me confident in saying that post modes, Australian Survivor and US Survivor, are around equally as fear. Let's run those pre-merge numbers again. The future is looking bright. Everyone's just being unfair to Australian Survivor. It's not that bad. It's fair. It's fun. It's... Oh god. Oh no. Almost all of the challenges are multi-part. Of the 127 US Survivor pre-merge challenges, 124 of them are multi-part. That means our percentages barely move at all. We go from 76.3% of them featuring an equalizer to 78.2%, with 45.2% of them being a puzzle of some sort. That's barely worth discussing. Is... Is Australian Survivor better? Marginally. Of the 182 Australian Survivor pre-merge challenges, 165 of them are multi-part. This takes us from 47.2% featuring an equalizer to 52.1%. This is a 5% improvement and brings it over the halfway mark, but it is still leagues away from US Survivor's 78.2%. And the puzzles jump from 21.4% to 23.8%, compared to US Survivor's 45.2%. Maybe people were onto something. Maybe Australian Survivor just has unfair challenges. But man, they're just so unapologetically cool! I'll close by asking you guys a question. Is this actually a bad thing? What are your thoughts on these stats? Do you like Australian Survivor featuring more rough and tough challenges? Do you prefer US Survivor's method of having more challenges with an equalizer? Maybe you think US Survivor overdoes it? Let me know in the comments below. I'm really excited to cook up some more content with this data set which you can find linked in the description. I've been Henry Hickman Survivor, and I'll see you at the next challenge.